to two is where we're gonna start. Um, so look at this example one here. It says, given the chart, what is your domain? What is your range? And does this relation represent a function? What do you do for domain? All the numbers what? In numerical order. In numerical order. No what? Repeats. No repeats, okay? We don't want any duplicates. So if you look at your X's, domain is all your X's. That's going to be, remember your fun little brackets here, negative 3 first, then 1, then 5, then 10. Okay, that's our domain. What's your range? Range is your Y values, right? Domain is your X's, range is your Y's. What would that be? Negative 3, 5, and 20, right? No duplicates. So even though there's two negative 3s there, don't write it twice. Write it one time. Negative 3, 5, and 20. Um, does this represent a function? Yeah. How do you know? Because there's no repeated x's. Yes. No repeated x's. Okay? You may have repeated y's. You may not have repeated x's for it to be a function. Okay? Um, questions on that? Okay, number two, moving over. Um, so it says given f of x, which is negative 3x minus 5, and g of x, which is x squared plus 1, find g of 0 and f of negative 3. Okay, two separate problems here. What do you do for g of 0? Plug 0 in for x in the g function, right? So g of 0 is 0 squared plus 1. So g of 0 is what? 0. zero. Uh, no, sorry, not 0. 1 is 1, yes. Um, 0 squared is 0, plus 1 would be 1. Okay. Then we got to do f of negative 3. So f of negative 3, we're going to plug that negative 3 in right here. So it's negative 3 times negative 3 minus 5. So f of negative 3 is what? Four. four. Yeah, positive nine, nine minus five is four. Okay, so just plug in that value in for the x. Okay, um, number three, when you see y varies directly with x, what should that make you think? Y over x, right? Y varies directly with x means your constant is y over x, okay? So if y equals negative 2 when x is 10, what is x when y is 24? How would you set that up? Yes. Yep, negative 2 over 10 equals 24 over x, right? Y over x equals y over x. Um, so you're just setting up a proportion and then solve it by cross-multiplying. So negative 2x equals 240, divide by negative 2, and you get x equals a negative 120. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, 2, 3, and 2, 4, we talked about three different forms of equations. You need to know these, okay? We don't put them on the quiz for you. Now, you might see it somewhere on the quiz, but it's not going to say, here's slope-intercept form, right? You might see an equation in slope-intercept form, but it's not going to tell you that that's slope-intercept. So just make sure that you know what each form looks like. Slope-intercept is the y equals mx plus b. Point slope is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and standard is ax plus by equals c. Okay, make sure you know those. Um, so for these first few, it says write the equation in slope-intercept form. And sometimes that's very straightforward, and other times you're going to have to do some simplifying and um, switch things around a bit. So let's start with number four here. Okay, slope intercept form, you need a slope and you need a y intercept, right? Y equals mx plus b. So what would this be in slope intercept form? Y equals two x. Right, negative 2x 
And then your y-intercept is a negative 6, so minus 6. They don't get any easier than that, right? Here's your numbers. Plug them into the form. You're good to go. Um, what if it says, number 5 here, we want to be perpendicular to this line. What are you looking for? Yep, opposite reciprocal, right? We want the opposite reciprocal for perpendicular. So if my current slope is negative 5, what's my perpendicular slope? One fifth, right? A positive one fifth. So my new slope is going to be one fifth. Um, and then it gives us a y intercept. So what do we do? Into what form? Into the slope intercept form, right? Um, now here's the thing. Here's what a lot of you are going to try to do for me on the quiz. You're going to take this and you're going to try to put it somewhere. That matters not at all to us, okay? What we care about in that equation is just the slope. Please don't try to plug that 7, or was it a negative 7? I don't even know. Um, don't plug that in for your y-intercept. Your y-intercept is 2, so it's y equals the slope, 1 fifth times x plus 2, okay? Okay, what if they give us a point to, um, that we're going through, 5, 3, and a slope of negative four. You're gonna start with point slope, but the question asks for slope intercept, right? So start with point slope. This would be your x1, y1, and your m. So it's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, right? We're just gonna plug into that, but then change it to slope intercept. So this is gonna be y minus the three, equals a slope of negative four times x minus our x value, which is five. And now how do you turn something into slope intercept? Distribute. We're gonna distribute, we're gonna isolate the y, right? We wanna get y by itself. So we're gonna distribute this negative four. So y minus three equals negative four x plus 20. Remember negative four times negative five is gonna get us a positive. And then we're going to add the 3. So y equals a negative 4x plus 23. And that is then slope-intercept form. What do you do when they give you two points? We want slope-intercept. Find the slope first. What did you say, Chris? I said you could pick either point. You can pick either point to be your point, and you need to find the slope, okay? So let's start by finding the slope. And again, if I were you, play it safe. Just label your points. One of them is x1, y1. One is x2, y2. Then we're going to plug that into the slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? That's how we find a slope. Um, and you do need to know that formula too. I don't give you that one. Um, so if we plug this in, y2, negative 7, minus y1, so minus a negative 1, and then x2, negative 3, minus x1, which is 6, that becomes plus a positive. So negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. Negative 3 minus 6 is a negative 9. What is our slope? two-thirds yes and positive a negative over a negative is a positive right so this is two-thirds as a slope okay so that's our m um now from here you may pick either point i don't care which one they both will work um you pick the one that makes the most sense to you maybe you want to try this on your own first pick the point that you want um i'm going to pick the first point so i'm going to pick the six negative one so it will be y minus that negative one equals two-thirds times x minus the six. Um, so simplify that, that's plus one, and we're gonna distribute the two-thirds. So y plus one equals two-thirds x 
minus, and now if you distribute that, two thirds of six is what? Four. four. Two times six would be 12. 12 divided by three is four, right? Or plug it into your calculator if you don't love fractions. Um, but that should be four. And then last step, if we're putting it into slope intercept, take away one. So we get y equals 2 thirds x minus 5. Okay. How are we doing so far? Decent. Okay. Um, number eight. They tell us here to use the line with equation 3x minus 6y equals 18. Okay, so the first thing it says is rewrite the equation in slope-intercept form. How do you do that? Isolate the y. Isolate the y. We want to get y by itself. So we're going to first start by subtracting 3x from both sides. So it's negative 6y equals negative 3x plus 18. Okay, I usually put the the mx first just so it's in that slope intercept form right off the bat you could switch it 18 minus 3x is not wrong um, then we're going to divide by negative 6 but make sure you're doing that everywhere so we get y equals what's our slope six, seven, one, half. one half negative 3 over negative 6 is a positive one half times x and then minus 3 Okay, so that's rewriting it in slope-intercept form. Notice it says show work there. Please, 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 on your quiz, show me everything you're doing. That would be super helpful to your grade, especially, but also to me. Um, what's the y-intercept? Negative 3. Yeah, the y-intercept is a negative 3. And what's the slope? 1 half. Okay. Okay, then graphing. Everybody loves graphing, right? I like graphing. Um, so for graphing y equals 4 fifths x minus 1, this is slope intercept form. Do you plot the slope or the intercept first? Intercept. The intercept. So we start here, okay? This is our first thing. Um, where does that move us? Up, down, left, right? Down down one, right? It's the y-intercept. So on the y-axis, we're gonna go down one from zero, zero. Where do I move from there? Up four to the right five, okay? So one, two, three, four up, one, two, three, four, five to the right would put me here, right? One, two, three, four up, one, two, three, four, five. So you get those two points, and then you just draw a line in. Okay. Um, what does that mean for number 10, then? Where do I go first? Oh, up five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Remember, y-intercept. Some of you are going to put it on the x-axis on the quiz. Don't do it. Okay. Avoid that. Up five. Um, where do I move for a slope of negative three? Right, treat it like a fraction. Down three, one, two, three, and always to the right. You can do it again if you want. Down three to the right one, you get this line. Okay. Questions on that? Okay, so that's gro 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 graphing in slope intercept. Um, now look at this next one. It says graph the line um, using the intercept method. So x-intercept and y-intercept, this is standard form, okay? Do you remember what you do here? Cover a method, so take away your x and solve for y, take away your y and solve for x, right? So you're gonna write two equations. For the x-intercept, the equation's gonna be 5x equals 10. For the y-intercept, the equation is negative 2y equals 10. So divide by 5 up here, and we get x equals 2 for an x-intercept. Um, divide by negative 2 here, and we get y equals negative 5. Okay, how do you plot intercepts? 
on their axes, right? Not the point two, negative five. Two, negative five is not a point on this graph. Um, we do at an x-intercept, two to the right. That would be there. A y-intercept is going to go down five from zero, zero. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so those are the two intercepts, and then you just draw the line in. Try to hit the points, I missed. Okay. Um, you do number 12. Same idea, using the intercept method, or the cover-up method, if you will. What's your x-intercept, what's your y-intercept? graph it. What did you get for your x-intercept? X-intercept is 6, right? Your equation would just be x equals 6, so there's not anything even to solve there. What would you get for your y-intercept? That should be 2. Divide by 3, so y-intercept is 2. So x-intercept of 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 would go there. Y-intercept of 2 goes right there, and then you draw your line in. I missed again. Okay, questions on that? Okay, these next two are really easy to mix up, but they're also really easy to keep straight if you just stop and think about it. Okay, let's stop and think about this. When I ask you to graph the line y equals negative two, if you just plot some points that have a y value of negative two, you'll see the line, right? So think about y being negative two. If I have 0, negative 2, my y value is negative 2. If I have 1, negative 2, my y value is negative 2. If I have 2, negative 2, my y value is negative 2. What kind of line is that? That's horizontal, right? Um, so 0, negative 2, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 2, 4, negative 2. My y is negative 2. That is this line. Okay, what's the slope of that line? Zero. It's zero. Any horizontal line always has a slope of zero. Now again, you don't have to have that memorized because what could you do? Take those points, plug them into the slope formula, you'll get zero, right? But if you wanna just memorize a horizontal line, here's how I always say it, if it's horizontal, right? The slope is zero. Oh, zero. Very similar, right? Um, what's your y-intercept? It's negative two. Where did you hit the y-axis? We hit it right here at negative two, okay? So the slope is zero for a horizontal line. The y-intercept is wherever you hit the y-axis, okay? Now look at the next one. This one's different x equals 4.5. So think about where does x equal 4.5? 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. 4.50, 4.51, 4.52, and so on and so forth. We end up with this line, okay? Remember x equals is always a vertical line, okay? What's the slope of that line? What is the slope of every vertical line? Undefined, right. Um, and you can always plug that into the slope formula if you're not sure. If I take two points like 4.50, oops, right, and 4.51, and I plug that into the slope formula, I get one minus zero, 
over 4.5 minus 4.5. Um, so I get 1 over 0. Are you allowed to divide by 0? No, right? So that's how we know it's undefined. Okay. Um, what's your y-intercept? None. None. There isn't one. We don't hit the y-axis at all in a vertical line like this. If it were the y-axis, that would be infinitely many y-intercepts, right? Um, any questions on that? Okay, last question. Oh, we're getting close here. Um, number 15, it says there were 174 words typed in three minutes. There were 348 words typed in six minutes. And then they tell you what your variables are. X is the time in minutes. Y is the number of words. Write a linear equation in slope intercept form. And then how many words would be typed in nine minutes, okay? So they told you that your points should be minutes, nope, time, well, yeah, either way, time in minutes, um, and number of words, right? That's how you should label your points. So what are your two points that you have to work with? 374 and six, 374. Yes, so 3174 and 6348, right? Those are your two points, okay? Um, what do we have to do first? Find the slope. Find the slope. We're gonna do x1, y1 and x2, y2 and plug that into the slope formula. So 348, minus 174, and then six minus three. Okay, simplify that, you get 174 over three, divide that, you get 58. Okay, so that's your slope, that's M. What do you do from there? Pick a point, yep, so I would pick the smaller numbers. So you're going to plug that into point slope form, first of all. So it's going to be y minus 174 equals m, which is 58, times x minus 3. Okay, they asked for slope intercept form up here. So we need to solve for y. So we're going to distribute y minus 174 equals 58x minus 174. Um, and then we're going to add 174 to isolate the y, which is going to make that 0. So it's y equals 58x. Um, that's slope-intercept form. Okay, that's part A. How many words would be typed in 9 minutes? What do you do? Plug 9 in for what number, of minutes? number of minutes would be your what? That's your x value, yeah. Um, so we're going to take this 9 and we're going to drop it in right here. So y equals 58 times 9. So y is 522. And real world problem, answer the question, how many words would be typed? You would say 522 words. Label it. Okay. Questions on that? Guys, you don't have homework tonight. Study for your quiz. Make sure you're comfortable. This is the information you need to know for the quiz. So if you can do the things on this worksheet, you're in good shape for the quiz. It's very similar types of questions, yeah, to what you just did today. 